A writer once called Pittsburgh hell with the lid off. We'll let you decide how accurate that is. But we can say without fear of contradiction that our city's character was forged in pig iron furnaces so hot that men and women sometimes forgot their fear of hell. Any town that's lived through the tumult and turmoil ours has seen cannot escape its ghosts, and Pittsburgh is teeming with them. Delving into matters macabre shouldn't seem all that strange to Pittsburghers. After all, this is the town where guys used to take their prom dates to the morgue to view the bodies. The three rivers are the city's lifeblood. Early Native Americans believed that evil spirits dwelled in one murky spot of the Ohio, where they said the river had no bottom and boats refused to venture near it. Early incline operators made up ghost stories about Coal Hill to scare frugal pedestrians into abandoning the stairs to ride their funiculars. They shouldn't have made light of the supernatural. One morning before dawn, an incline operator was alone in the basement of the Mount Washington station, and the building was all locked up. Then his cell phone rang. He looked to see who was calling. It was the phone upstairs. Up at the old Allegheny County Jail in 1907, the New York Times reported that the entire murderer's row had to be moved because the hardened criminals were being harassed by the ghost of a former prisoner. The building is also home to Pittsburgh's most famous ghost, Kate Sofel, the wife of the jail's former warden. She fell in love with an inmate scheduled to be hanged and helped him escape. Her spirit still wanders the building. Several of the libraries that Andrew Carnegie gave to the region are spectacularly haunted. In Oakland, high up on a wall in the stacks where a judge hanged himself, sometimes the words appear, the judge is here. Outside the Lawrenceville Library, there was an old cemetery on which city council wanted to build a school. The city supposedly moved the bodies, but then, workers dug up caskets and bones and they knew someone was lying. Inside the library, the ghost of a little boy, whose gravestone is on display, roams the halls at night. On Mount Washington, a deceased hairdresser, trying to be helpful, sometimes pulls visitors toward books she thinks they might like. Western Pennsylvania is a treasure trove of the unexplained. On September 24, 1950, the sky turned dark red for no reason, and frightened citizens thought that the world was coming to an end. Then there was the Pittsburgher Henry, well, better known as Harry, K. Thaw, who shot architect Stanford White in front of hundreds of witnesses to avenge the honor of his showgirl wife, Evelyn Nesbitt. To this day, the murder remains a whodunit. Was Harry the killer? Or was it the evil spirit that took over Harry's body just before he pulled the trigger? Journey with us back to the gilded age of ragtime and robber barons, of boastful mansions bathed in gaslight, and of a millionaire's row that was the most exclusive address in America. Join us at Haunted Pittsburgh as we tell Pittsburgh's story through the lens of its greatest tales of the unexplained. <laughs>